night. President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, the one he's repeatedly defended, claiming he's, quote, done nothing wrong, indicted on three felony gun charges. This, uh, this comes just two days after House Republicans launched an impeachment inquiry into old Joe over his alleged involvement in his family's shady business dealings. But just last night, the commander in <clears throat> good grief was brushing it off, yucking it up with donors at a fundraiser in Virginia and assuring everyone that he's not worrying his petty little head, saying, quote, I get up every day, not a joke, not focused on impeachment. We're surprised it gets up every day, every morning. America's worst off for it. But given the glaring schism between House Republicans and some of their Senate colleagues who've characterized the move as a fool's errand, establishment media, they immediately pounced on the rift, insinuating McCarthy's announcement was made only so he could hold on to his speakership. Ridiculous. One New York Times columnist writing, quote, it may be that even McCarthy is nauseated by his latest stunt, that it has finally sunk in that he has become the not-so-glorified puppet of the House Republican Conference's radicals, folks like Dan Bishop, Chip Roy, and most prominently, Matt Gates. And while Biden laughs off the potential demise of his decades-long political career, it's been reported that he plunged into sadness and frustration when Hunter's plea deal collapsed back in July. And despite all that, the White House shot down any possibility of a presidential pardon for Hunter. From a presidential perspective, is there any possibility that the president would end up pardoning his son? No. Well, is there a I, I just said no. I just answered. So let's add this all up. And at number one, an addled president under the threat of impeachment, his son indicted on gun charges, which should have happened five years ago, working Americans feeling punch drunk after two and a half years of Bidenomics, China, Russia, Iran, at all, enriched and empowered by climate crackpotonomics, all this in the shadow of the 2024 election just over a year away. Here now to react is the author of the best-selling book, Battle for the American Mind, great book, and Fox and Friends weekend co-host, the great Pete Hegseth. Pete, good to see you. Great to see you. Well laid out. Uh, thank you. So uh, you, you look he at what's going on. He didn't do a word of it. <laughs> I did all of it. So, but you look at this, bad week for Joe Biden, right? So yeah. one, there's the impeachment inquiry, now his son's being indicted. Um, but if you look at where he sits, he's like, listen, I got a media that covers for me. I probably have the Department of Justice gonna co that's going to cover for my son. He wasn't even charged with the tax evasion charges that uh, go, you know, four or five years ago. So he did have a Justice Department that was prepared to cover for him until that plea deal fell apart. Right. Ultimately. Now there these are real charges. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it actually ends up playing out. But this is potentially 25 years in jail. He did have a media willing to cover up for everything. But there's a huge crack in that dam, too, with the David Ignatius column in The Washington Post, who effectively writes for the deep state by saying, Joe, we love you. Look at all the great things you've done. I don't agree with what he wrote there. But it's time for you and Kamala Harris to leave. That's a column Joe Biden reads every single day. You add on top of it an impeachment inquiry. If it's handled correctly, where they get additional evidence, they can say all they want. There's no evidence right now. We know there is. It's a matter of getting their hands on the suspicious activity reports, getting their hands on the bank records, bank records. getting their hands on uh, all the meetings that occurred, uh, the, all the things that they, all the people they need to talk to. This is the moment right now where Democrats have to make that choice. Are we going with Joe Biden and all this, the, the baggage that comes with it, or are we going to cut bait? And, and this is really a, a month or two decision they have. Otherwise, they're saddled with Kamala, or they don't have enough time to, uh, to reverse engineer what they need to do for 2024. So I think the dam has broken here. And we, we've speculated on this for a long time. Add this all together. Um, Bad, bad week for Biden. I do think they're lying about the pardon, though. Of course he would pardon Hunter if he's if he's in, uh, convicted. Of course uh, they will. Of course he's going to. I have a hot, well, it's a, not even a hot take on it. They won't, Joe Biden won't need to pardon him. This is a simple gun charge. Should have happened five years ago. David Weiss, just a, he was literally just a few weeks away from the statute of limitations limitations expiring on this charge. He had to do something because mm -hmm. he was forced by the judge to do it. He's going to cut a plea deal sure. with the lawyers. Sure. And this 
greasy clown is not going to get any time right. at know, all. Forget about Hunter. I don't care about Hunter. Not interested in Hunter. He's made a lot of bad life choices, and he's been a lackey for his dad. What I care about is what Joe Biden knew, when he knew it, how involved he was. How about the voicemails that this Ukrainian um, energy executive claims to have, 15 of, of Hunter and two of Joe? If they exist, that will eventually Wait come a minute. out. But you should care, because just a few months ago, David Weiss wasn't even going to charge Hunter Biden no, I mean, I, because they're all in the pocket of Joe Biden. And Joe's walking around, and maybe we're giving, we talk about how addled he is. Really? How addled is he? Because they were, there was a cuddle puddle between Hunter's lawyers and the, uh, turn, the attorney general and David Weiss just a few months ago. Yeah, I mean, addled They were is, spooning, literally. Addled is an SAT word I need to look up because I don't really know what it means. In cognitive decline. In, he is absolutely in cognitive decline. But that's, I mean, Hunter, of course, he should get the same justice as everybody else, which we all know he won't get because of who he is. But the real question is, do we have a compromised president? Have we had a compromised president? And did he sell us out to foreign enemies to enrich his family? That's all I want to know. Me and too. that's what House Republicans have to that's discover. What just, just real quick, what frustrates me, too, on this is you have House Republicans that are divided. You know, and they, they have a really tight majority. Yeah. But you can't get every Republican to go, we're, we're going to investigate Joe Biden. We, we actually want to see the bank records. And by the way, if nothing's there, great. We'll say we're sorry and good for you, Joe. But where there's smoke, there's probably fire. And that every Republican isn't standing up to go, we need to know as American citizens what money was made by Hunter and did it go to Joe Biden? You did know that caucus better than me. I mean, how, how, how weak do you have to be as a moderate Republican to not you. at least vote for an inquiry? Because you know he would do it based on what he said before if he could. Clearly of the course. votes aren't there yet. I think the vote will eventually happen. That makes it a stronger process with even additional powers. But You should name names. Well, and how you should name names. It's well, a great point. How condescending and haughty and sniff sniff do you have to be over in the Senate? These Republicans Republicans poo-pooing what the House is doing with the impeachment inquiry. Well, you that, better. That's senators be senator. <laughs> you know, that's how they roll. Yeah, uh, and sending us deep into debt with the. Mm, we don't. We we uh, we dislike our uh, uh, House colleagues Mitch McConnell, across the aisle. Lindsey Graham. But we really kind of hate the Senate. The Senate is <laughs> horrible. All right, let's shift gears, Pete, uh, to this out of New Mexico. Nice try, Governor Grisham. Uh, a federal judge temporarily blocking her executive order that prevented lawful gun owners from carrying their firearms in public for 30 days. The district judge, David Urris, uh, uh, stated, quote, the violation of a constitutional right, even for minimal periods of time, uh, unquestionably constitutes irreparable injury. Pete, I mean, uh, th when we saw this come out, those of us who support the Second Amendment mm -hmm. and the Constitution outraged. Thank God we have great justices that will hold up the Constitution. I've never been more grateful for the judges that Donald Trump appointed yeah. at the Supreme Court as well, that even if the federal judge hadn't ruled on it, it's going to go to a common sense court where this is going to be overturned. She knew it was unconstitutional from the of beginning. Of course she did. These are trial balloons that the left will keep floating, whether it's guns, whether it's racism, whether it's climate, whether it's speech, whether it's speech, you name it. You know what? Because it's so bad. And get ready for it. Because our political rhetoric, our political environment is going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. Indictments, you know, debates, convictions, all the things that are coming on the Republican and Democrat side, it's only going to get ratcheted up. And if they can get away with a 30-day yep. carry conceal ban in, a danger, you know, in Albuquerque, they'll push for more. So I'm glad I'm, the citizens that came out and said, we will not comply. The oh. sheriffs that came out and said, we will not comply. The attorney general, I mean, there's some people that have done the right thing, and it's good to see. This judge? who issued the temporary restraining order is a Biden appointee. Even better. How about that? That's and how bad, the, that's how this, bad it is. This rule the, well, they, I, again, Ted Lieu came out and said yeah, this yeah, is yeah, unconstitutional, yeah. and the Biden appointee said TRO on this. And, you, well, let's move on to this. Randy Weingarten mm. isn't known to make much sense at all, and the same goes for this wild comparison, where she suggests parental rights and school choice Echo segregation. Those same words that you heard in terms of um, warning segregation post Brown v. Board of Education, those same words you hear today. I was kind of gobsmacked when I was on the, I was talking to Southern Poverty Law Center and they showed me the same words, choice, um, parental rights. Southern Poverty Law Center tells me everything I need to know about where she gets her information. 
Of course, this is an autocrat obsessed with her fiefdom and power that's willing to say and do anything to keep it and has, doesn't respect parents, isn't a parent herself, and doesn't believe that you, as an individual, whether you're black, white, brown, have an opportunity to send your kids wherever you want. Public schools are under siege because of leadership like her and unions that have driven them into the ground. And now they're going to claim racism, like they always do, with every single topic. You are racist if you want your kids to homeschool. Every, everything is racist. It doesn't matter yeah. what you do that you disagree with it, they call it, claim it's racist. Can, I, wait, where, where can I, I turn going. this around? Turn it around. I cannot think of any one individual who has done more harm to children of color in this country in recent years than that vile woman. She is a power-hungry science denier who hates children. What she did to kids, particularly child, Latino children and black children, any children of color across this country during COVID, gave, irreparably damaged them developmentally, mental illness, uh, lifelong setbacks, simply because of her. Amen. How many so there's no, nobody more racist than that woman and what she did to kids. Well, that's what anti-racism is. You're exactly right. I'm going to give you snaps for that one. Yeah, that's that what the kids do these days. Yeah. I agree. Well, it's a snap. But just real quick on that. And we always say, well, that's Randy Weingarten and the teachers' union. But it's not the teachers. Actually, it is the teachers. The teachers belong to the teachers' union, and they elect people like this to represent all of them. So you, you, they all fall under this tent. But I want to move on to this, Pete, because progressive education policies, they're making their way back across the nation. A Portland school district is now workshopping equitable grading practices. Parents, they're up in arms calling the practice a disservice to students by failing to prepare them for the real world. Under equitable grading, homework, attendance, class participation are among the things your child won't be evaluated on. Pete, <laughs> these parents are right. I mean, this is insanity. You, you want to- work. Yeah. Ta like attendance? attendance? Yeah. Yeah. So participation? This is a nation in decline. You can't raise wow. kids to be competitive in a global economy if this is the school system that educates them. And this is the inevitable end state of the logic that teachers unions and the left will push. If diversity, equity, and inclusion is your lodestar, or whatever fad of the moment is your lodestar, you will devolve to the lowest common denominator. And now grades don't matter. Who fails the most? The place where there aren't family and community networks to help reinforce those standards, which is the same kids that you're talking about, Dag, in the last segment. Uh, that will fall behind because it's racist now to ask someone to be on time. But, but you know what, you also, when you don't grade kids, you can't tell how far they fall behind, so we can't blame the teachers. So this is exactly. actually a scapegoat And then everyone the passes, teachers. and, then, teachers and then no one's failing, and the teachers get a, a passing grade and a bonus and more money. And more money. Can yeah, I that's ask right. him something real quick? You can. I got a text message yesterday from someone who works in the tech industry, an executive, who went to a recruiting session at Carnegie Mellon University. Look out. 100% of the students were not from the United States. We are a nation of fools, the person wrote to me. We're a nation of fools. We're doing it to ourselves. We are, we are a nation in decline. We're, we're, we're not giving kids skills and we're teaching them to hate our country and believe that they're victims and then we think we're gonna perpetuate this place. You know, if, if you've noticed that uh, the, the education system has gone woke recently, um, you'll be surprised to read Pete Hexess's book. It's actually gone on for over a hundred years. It's a great book. The Fox Nation special is awesome. Appreciate we appreciate that. all the work you've done mm -hmm. trying to in, in, inform and empower parents to take control of their kids' life and get them into schools that actually work for their because children. Because we can't change all the policy and we can't change Randy Weingarten right now, but you control where your kids go, at Absolutely. least for now. Pete Hexa. Thank you guys. I was a pleasure. Appreciate it.